Well, hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program, which is called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show that centers on what's going on in the world of the Beatles. Newswise, I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, best known for my syndicated Beatles program called Every Little Thing, being joined by my co-host, Mr. Beatles Examiner, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Uh, Hey, everybody. How's it going? Well, on uh, today's show, guess what? We're going to be talking about Paul McCartney. (laughs) Seems like we're always talking about Paul McCartney. (laughs) I'm telling you, for someone who's 71 years old, uh, he seems to be as active as someone who's 21 years old. And uh, there's there's always news going on about him. And uh, we have just discovered the new issue of Rolling Stone magazine. This is the August 27th issue. Which has 29th, a, it's the 29th, actually. Okay, 29th, sorry. And um, it has a preview of upcoming releases, and it talks about Paul's upcoming album. And again, it doesn't give you the title. It only mentions one title of any of the songs that are in there. But it does shed some light on some of the work that was done on the album. And I know that Steve is more excited about talking about this than I am, which is something that <laughs> kind of strange. But, uh, you know, he wanted very, very badly to bring this up because of the Rolling Stone article. And and since we discovered this, there's something else that has popped up in Rolling Stone, which Steve will enlighten us on. There's a there's a new Rolling Stone article that has shown up on the Internet uh, this afternoon. This is, uh, as, you, as we've said before, we tape on Wednesday, so this is on Wednesday. And uh, it's an interview with, with Ethan Johns, who is one of the four producers on the album. Mm-hmm. And um, there isn't a whole lot of information here. All these articles seem to be kind of a calculated publicity thing to get everyone excited. And it's certainly working because the reactions I've seen on Twitter and on Facebook have been enormous. Everybody is going going nuts wanting to hear this album and everybody uh, has been talking about how exciting an event the Mark Lewison book will be. I mean, you, you yourself, uh, you know, have said how exciting it will be. But the, but the McCartney book is going to rival. I mean, it's going to be bumping that and, and McCartney album. McCartney album. I'm sorry. It's going to be two big, huge Beatle events. Um, you know, on a selfish level. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want when Mark's book comes out for nothing else to be released for a month. Just let me dive right in, you know, because if I get the author's cut, which I'm I'm planning on doing, it's two thousand pages. I need time to read that. Well, if McCartney's... you're gonna have you're gonna have the McCartney album on top of it. Oh, I'll like. never finish the book then. <laughs> yeah, I know it's gonna be it's gonna be something. But the McCartney album is gonna be. Uh, it looks like uh, according to the. The information that's out there, it's going to be out in October. There's been a couple of different things now, a couple of different reports that have come out, and it seems to indicate that it will be out in October. At the very least, it will be out before the end of the year. There's been several, there's been a couple of fake, a couple of quote unquote track lists. In fact, I just saw a new one today, and, um, there was a fake one that came out a few months ago. Yeah, another one. Uh, I saw another one today. Somebody alerted me to another one, and I honestly do not get very excited about those for the simple reason that in in situations like this, people are going to say things, and because there's nothing to go on, they'll either believe it or they won't, or and they're hoping that you will, because there's nothing to back it up. So these titles are pulled out of thin air, and and there's no way to know if anything means anything. And this it's a particular crime. this yeah. particular new track list. I'm not going to go through the whole track list. I'm just going to say the 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 title of the album as listed on the track list is "Leaving Now." So just remember that, and <laughs> and don't say I I told you the album title because I don't know if this is the album title or not. It's some it's either somebody's idea of an album title or. It's actually the real thing, and I really kind of doubt it's the real thing because these things almost never, ever, ever pan out. We'll see if it proves to be true. We'll see if it proves. Yeah, a couple of the titles on this list have been on the debunked 
list before. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. They here, even but, went went to mention on that that uh, that previous list that there was a track with the members of Nirvana, mm-hmm. and there was a track with Bruce Springsteen. Just yeah, you know, I remember. Be- I remember that one. That was a little. That was a little easier to. Uh, did not believe uh, the, the the Nirvana track is on this particular second list, and I think everybody's kind of you know, figuring that's an easy one to, you know, kind of a logical thing to believe. I don't necessarily believe it, uh, but who knows? But it, it's natural to to throw those things in because of Paul's involvement with both those artists right now. Yeah. So. But anyway, why don't we talk about this preview, what was said in this one page in Rolling Stone. Um, I have a quote from here from Paul that I'll read for you. Mm -hmm. He actually says, I'm always loathe to say it's a great bleeping album. I try to be modest, but I think you're going to like this one. It's been a really cool adventure. Which is what I used in the lead of the little roundup that I wrote. Uh, about you're really going to like this one and a really cool adventure, and there are there are a couple of things that you know everybody's getting excited about it, and I understand that, but there's also a couple of things that are making this whole thing look a little calculated and manufactured. The fact that he compares it to Beatles songs and says, you know, this isn't a rock album or an acoustic album. And he compares it to past Beatle albums, and he mentions, why don't we do it in the road next to Blackbird and something next to She's So Heavy, saying, I, we really ran the changes. This has turned out a little bit like that. What he's basically saying is that, he, he, I think he said it's not a rock album and it's not an acoustic album. Well, and his he, albums aren't usually, aren't usually either anyway. I mean, he, McCartney has a, has a branding, if you want to use a, a business term, Paul McCartney is a brand, which is why I think the fire. He didn't want to call Electric Arguments Paul McCartney. He wanted to call it the Fireman, because he was actually. I think he was a little nervous about the reaction. And I, well, that I, disturbs me. Yeah, it you know, does. To, I, 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 because number one, because I, I don't think he realized how great it was. It was, it was a that was a brilliant album. It really, really was. Very fresh sounding. Very yeah. different. It really was. And I'm I'm hoping that this new album, whatever it's called, is the same way. So we'll Well, see. We'll see what happens. You know, when he's saying something like that, he says that it it reminds him of the Beatles, and he does this now with every new album that he puts out. And it really bothers me that he has to somehow use the Beatles to sell a new album. He shouldn't have to do that. He should be proud of his his entire catalog. But I just want to say, because he's saying... Basically, that you know, there's a lot of variety on here. It's eclectic. It's an eclectic album. That's who Paul McCartney is. <laughs> Paul McCartney is the most musically eclectic artist we've ever had, and, and the and, people and who and know even, that are the people who have really studied him. And I mean, anybody that's going to mention, going to talk about this album is going to, in some way, connect it to the Beatles. It's that's just the way things are. So it's, uh, I don't. I don't. I certainly don't. <laughs> oh no, I, 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 I can't see any way you you can't get around, you can get around that. I don't see any way that. I mean, there there was the the report of the secret listening session where the guy connected to you know compared it to Beatles songs. So uh, that kind of thing, uh, writers will do that because that's who he is, and it also kind of makes it easier for the audience. It makes to, it easier to, to sell it. have the Beatle connection. Yeah. They expect the Beatle connection, and writers are happy to provide it, and so is, so is Paul. Uh, so is Paul's manager, who was quoted in that, in that listening session report. It's almost kind of insulting, in a way. Not just the fact that he has to use the Beatles to sell himself, but if you study everything that Paul's done in his solo career, he's been all over the place musically. I mean, he's done everything from folk music and acoustic music, to rockers, to country music, to ambient music with the fireman, to classical music, you know, dance music. He's been all over the place. True. But and he, he must realize that he is this person who's done all this work. And so for him to have an image of himself as though he's, I don't want to say more limited, more the pop artist, 
you know, Mr. Silly Love Songs, that kind of thing. I would hate to think that he has that image of himself because I think of him the exact opposite way. The pop music is just one side of him. And the people who have really listened to everything that he's done are aware of it. I understand what you're saying, that more people are familiar with the Beatles catalog than his solo catalog, so he has to rely on the Beatles. But he always tries to find some way to tie the Beatles into every new release. When Kisses on the Bottom came out, I remember him saying, well, I was thinking about doing something like this with the Beatles. <laughs> you know, he's always got to work the Beatles in somewhere. Which, and, actual, which actually would have been a horrible idea, I think, if he had. Thank God he didn't. <laughs> well, whatever. You know, I'm just, I'm just trying to make a point here. You know, and every single time there's a new McCartney album out, you always hear, it's his best album since the Beatles. Or, once in a while, his best album since Band on the Run. One time I heard his best album since Tug of War. But most of the time, you always hear the Beatles. You always got to bring it back to the Beatles. And he shouldn't have to do that. I mean, it, that reminds me of the, of the old thing with George. With, uh, you know, he hated, you know, he, he always made fun of the Beatle George name, you know. I mean, and, 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 but Paul apparently doesn't have a problem with that. You know? No, he's proud of his past with the Beatles, as right. he should be. But he shouldn't completely rely on that. No, to he sell himself. Uh, he, it's 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 too bad he's he he doesn't feel more like George to put some a, a little bit of distance to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at look at him on stage. He has the he still has the Beatle kind of hairdo, kind of you know he he hasn't uh, where. I mean, it's interesting that that neither neither George nor John is here. You have to. Want, I mean, Ringo doesn't color his hair that much he's, he's kind of let the the gray kind of come out uh, the age kind of come out where paul doesn't and you, you have to wonder if george and uh, john were still here how they would look and it would seem to me that john would have john especially would not have done that john would have let his age come through but that's well, jo here George here. was letting his age come through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> George is letting his age come George through. George definitely did. But uh, that's kind of trailing off the subject here. But uh, just talking about the new album and all, um, from what I've read, you know, this album is sort of, and only in one way, reminding me of Flowers in the Dirt, only in the sense that there are these four producers that are mentioned here, and Flowers in the Dirt had a number of different producers work on various tracks. Mm -hmm. instead of having one producer working with Paul throughout the whole album. And that album, Flowers in the Dirt, has turned out to be my favorite of all of his. I thought it was an absolutely brilliant album. And, and there's another say, one that's very musically eclectic right there. Just look at listen to that I album. I particularly like it at, at the time. It has grown on me in, in the years since. Hmm. So. I mean, it represents, along with an album like Tug of War, which is another eclectic album. You listen track by track, and you've got different styles to everything. Right. That's who Paul is. Paul was that way in the Beatles. Right. You know, Paul went from Helter Skelter to Honey Pie on the same album. <laughs> That's Paul McCartney. He's, he has all these different influences, and it shows in his music in various forms, and it's spread out throughout his entire career, Beatles and solo. I, have, know, so. I have to say, though, that I... Again, I kind of wish he wouldn't rest so much on the on the Beatle comparisons and just kind of go off and do what he wants to do. I and agree. I, it's the way he is. It's the way he's, he... I, we should be used to it, I suppose, but it would really be nice if he would just kind of let go of it and uh, let it ride. Hmm. But it probably won't. It probably won't happen. Paul McCartney is, uh, you know, is the brand that it is. I hate and that word. I hate that word, Steve. Don't say that word. <laughs> I hear it all the time in the business world. Branding, right. branding, branding. Right. You know. But I mean, but it is. I mean, you know, there's no getting around it. I mean, the fact that he, I mean, the very fact that he's calling this album Paul McCartney as opposed to The Fireman indicates to me what I can expect from this album. I don't think, I don't think I'm wrong there. Uh, do you? Well, let's, let's just wait and see. When I heard Electric Arguments, it wasn't the ambient albums that the, the two previous Fireman albums were. That's true. You know, and in fact, a lot of the stuff that's on Electric Arguments could have fit very well on, on uh, Driving Rain or Press you to Play. So? Yeah, a lot of the electronic stuff, like Pretty Little Head, 
or uh, She's Given Up Talking, those songs remind me very much of what's on Electric Arguments. No, I think, I think Electric Arguments was a whole different vein, and I think that's the reason why... I, I, I mean, there were, there were arguments. I remember writing a column saying that he should have called it Paul McCartney, and he didn't. But uh, And he responded to that. Uh, he, there was at some point some kind of online thing where he, he was asked why he didn't call it Paul McCartney, and he just didn't. And I'm really kind of sorry he didn't, because I think that would have opened up a whole new avenue of, for him. And he um, could have you, really you... taken, done something, for example, like with this album. Again, and we're just kind of... You know, guessing here because neither of us have heard it. Hmm. But I'm suspecting from all the indications that we're hearing now that it's going to be a traditional Paul McCartney album, and I'm hoping it it is in, untraditional in some ways. But we will see. We won't know until you know until at least October or whenever it comes out. So there. I don't know if there is such a thing in my mind as a traditional Paul McCartney album. <laughs> Because most of those albums have been different for me, especially after the Wings period. That's um, just me talking. There are similarities, of course, with Tug of War and Pipes of Peace, but there are huge differences to me between Press to Play and Flowers in the Dirt and Flaming Pie and Driving Rain. They all have different sounds, different production. I think the and Chaos and Creation in the Backyard, that too. I think the thing about a McCartney album that you can pretty well expect, in my thinking, is very, very, very melodic whereas Electric Arguments was a lot edgier. And that kind of edginess, I would really love to see. I mean, I said it, I said it then, when uh, Electric Arguments came out, is that I wish more of that edginess would show up in Paul McCartney albums. I'm hoping that ha- that does happen here. Obviously, again, won't know until we hear it. Well, Paul, but even on Electric Arguments, the songs are melodic. They're also, very, they're also edgy, though, which sure. Paul McCartney... It could be both <laughs> at well, the same time. That's true. Anyway, some of the quotes that we have from this, this uh, preview, he does have just a sentence to say here about working with Paul Epworth, uh, who's known for working with artists like Adele and uh, Foster the People. He said that there was a freewheeling session, and, and uh, he said, we just went mad throwing ideas at each other. Ethan Johns is mentioned here. And Ethan, uh, for those who don't know, is the son of Glenn Johns. And uh, recently he's produced Kings of Leon and Laura Marling. And they worked on the ballad Hosanna, which is the only track that I've heard, you know, for the past year or so, which and is an actual title. It's also mentioned in the, in the uh, interview with Ethan Johns that just came out today. Yeah. The quote actually is a little longer in this uh, article than in the one that you and I are talking about and uh but it basically says the same thing he says uh it had an incredible feel a really evocative piece of music very interesting lyric and the performance is great and we started to experiment with it and i put a bunch of psychedelic strangeness strangeness on it you have fun oh try this do that it's just very inspiring to be around hmm. so there there you go uh, there's you know a little bit of that but okay that's that's definitely interesting. He, and he said also in, talks about doing yeah. a, playing with percussion loops with drum machines. Mm-hmm. So there has been a little bit of playing around. So we'll see. This is all discussion of something that nobody has heard. So we have no basis to know what meaning this is or how relevant it is to the actual album. Okay, so. but that's from his own words and his own experience in recording with Paul. Right. So. Um, and, all, and this is all just to get people excited. And dang, if it hasn't done that, I mean, it it really, really has. People are people are getting very excited about this. Hey, musically, there's nothing I'm looking forward to more than a new Paul McCartney album. You know, this wait has been really long. But mm-hmm. as I said before in previous shows, it may not seem that long because we've had the remasters coming out. We had uh, Paul's ballet. You know, we had things in between this we've and electric arguments. What's that? We've had the tour. Well, I'm talking about an album, a, a release, mm-hmm. you know. Um, by the way, it was reported this morning by the Huffington Post and I, uh, about the about the iHeart Festival mm-hmm. performance that I first broke the news over a week ago. 
and there's been some reports that he will do some new songs there. That's now, very interesting. Yeah, I I don't know that they're saying because it's clear it's clear channel gig, which it is, and it's also going to be on it's going to be on television, as I reported this morning. Great. So the only question is how much of it they're going to show. Mm-hmm. We don't, you know, they are going to, the two-day thing, uh, the two-day uh, performance, and I'm, I'm looking at the information. It's going to be on uh, September 30th and October 1st. Okay, so it's going to be CW edited down. Network. It's going to be edited down, oh, no yeah. matter what. And but, it's also, it's, it's four hours. Okay. And it's going to be also uh, live on uh, Clear Channel radio stations in 150 cities. So okay. uh, it'll be heard. But the interesting thing about that is that um, the Yarhart Radio Music Festival takes place September 20th and 21st. Paul will play on the 21st. If he's playing any new music from this new album, then it's definitely coming out either the end of September or October. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what it tells me anyway. Well, so. again, that's, there's been no, no real word on that. And I think that was a speculation on the part of Huffington Post. But yeah, I mean, obviously that would be that would definitely be the case if if it does happen. Hmm. We'll we'll see. Okay. Also, as far as the new album is concerned, Paul uh, called on Mark Ronson to work on some dance music with him. Mm-hmm. That was the person that he thought of. And uh, Mark Ronson's worked with uh, people like Amy Winehouse and Rufus Wainwright to name a few. And he also was the DJ at uh, Paul and Nancy's wedding. Which is, yeah, which must have been fun. Mm -hmm. That must have been a lot of fun. And then, of course, Giles is on there. Giles Martin, the son of George. Giles Martin, son of George. So you've got four different producers there all working with Paul. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, what this whole thing sounds like. The thing about, I brought up Flowers in the Dirt before. Interesting thing to me about that album is that you have a lot of different producers on there, but you'd never know it because the sound is really consistent. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't tell a, a Mitchell Froome produced song from uh, David Foster producing. That's, that's very you know? true. That particular album was done very cohesively. Yeah, or Came Trevor Horn or nicely. someone like that. Yeah, very nicely. So I'm excited about this. It it really seems to point to October, although we're not absolutely sure. But um, if that's the case, boy, you know, it's going to be. That and uh, Mark Lewison's book, <laughs> mm. <laughs> the big highlights of the year for me. One other thing we did not mention in the last show, where we talked about news things, and that is that good old Frida will be in theaters. Yes. Starting in September, and that's a biggie. Um, that's a biggie if you have not seen it. And we've, if you've been a listener to the show, you've heard us talk about the, the film. If you haven't seen it, Definitely go see it, and it will be out on DVD apparently by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. So that's, or somewhere around the end of the year. And I'm and sure that you've been very good about this with your Beatles Examiner columns. If you get a listing of where it's showing in the country, you're going to post it. Oh yes, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely will. I, I assuming, assuming the list isn't three thousand miles long, uh, you know that if I can get a list that I can post, yeah, I will definitely do that, or I will have a link to where it's available. Right. So. There should be a website for, for that movie, possibly, and on the well, website... Is, it, they do have a, a website. It's called goodoldfrieda.com. Okay. They've had that all along, and they've been posting the festival screenings there, which is where I've gotten a lot of the information from. And, in fact, I just heard about another one the other day, uh, another festival screening that they didn't have the last time I looked. I don't know if they've put it up there yet. So, but the, yeah, it's still going to be screened at a couple more festivals, but once it goes into general release, it'll be widely available. And I, I think it'll probably a lot of the independent uh, movie houses will have it. Uh, so there right. you go. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's, I think I definitely will go back and see it again. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I also will say, for the record here, that I guarantee you that after this show that we've just done is posted, the release date will come out for Paul's album. (laughs) 
and that's we how... will have to edit this, edit this show? <laughs> no, it's already out there. We can't do anything to change it. Okay. That's how things work with a, with a news-oriented show. Things change on a dime. So uh, that's, that's part of the disadvantages, although it certainly is fun to talk about what's happening today. Well, just keep track of uh, my Beatles Examiner column and Ken's Every Little Thing show, and between the two of us, we will have all this information out there and get it to you, and so there. Okay. So before we close, just want to let everyone know, if you want to get in touch with me, my personal email address is everylittlething at att.net, and by all means, please check out my website, which is kenmichaelsradio.com. There's a lot of trivia posted every single week with great prizes to give away and lots of really interesting interviews, including a brand new one, which is coming soon, that I just did with Steve Holly. So uh, be sure to check out the website, kenmichaelsradio.com. See, that's and, news to me. You didn't tell me about that. Well, I can't tell you everything. I want, to, I want to have news for you on this show once in a while. Oh, okay. You're always the one that breaks the news. I know. All right. Okay. So well, Congratulations uh, on that. Yeah, if people want to get in touch with you. Uh, you can email me at beetlesexaminer at gmail.com. And I've had some book previews up lately, and I'm going to have a couple more. And going to be, yeah, a lot of Beatle books uh, coming, uh, coming your way between now and the end of the year. And, and I'm going to have some exclusive previews of them. So keep a look at me, and we'll go from there. All right. Anyway. And if you want to get in touch with the two of us together for our show, we have our own email address, which is things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. And by all means, please like us on Facebook. We have our own Facebook page, Things We Said Today. I have one for Ken Michaels. Steve has about a thousand of them. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. <laughs> you should just have one page with a link to all of your Facebook pages. I do, actually. Well, yeah, I, I pretty much do. Well, somewhat. Okay. So. Four things we said today. This has been Ken Michael saying thanks so much for listening. And we'll see you next time. And for things we said today, this is Steve Marinucci saying the news, needle news never stops. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>